Hello, welcome back to your physics teacher with me, Mr. Fernando. And in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how we can begin to start to derive the kinematic equation of motion. So in this case, we're going to go with a very general graph, but we're going to be starting off with the velocity versus time. And let's assume a couple of things. Let's assume that we have Sonic, our good friend Sonic. And Sonic, in this case, had some initial velocity. So how we plot that on the y-axis, let's give it a y-intercept. So it has some initial velocity. And Sonic is speeding up because, let's say, he got the ring and he's very excited, so he's speeding up, which is away from the origin. And at the end of a certain time interval, his speed is now called V final. So again, uh, when we're deriving the equations, we want to go with a general case and we can see how it can apply for specific cases later on. And let's say that from this time interval, it starts from t initial, and at the final velocity, let's call that t final. Now if you recall, when we're analyzing a velocity versus time graph, there are two pieces of information that we can find. We can find the slope of the graph, and we can find the area under the curve. So let's first calculate the slope of the velocity time graph. So the slope of the velocity time graph is going to be the change in velocity over the change in time. And if you recall, the information that this actually gives you is the average acceleration. But to be lazy, we're just going to write acceleration. So the acceleration equals to the change in velocity over the change in time. But we do know that we're considering the time interval from t initial to t final. So we can simplify this expression. Actually, not simplify. We're going to make it more complicated. So the final velocity minus the initial velocity over the change in time. Now, I am going to leave the t final minus t initial as just delta t. So in the graph, well, let's just call this delta t. Now, remember, our goal is to derive new equations. So what we're going to do, we're going to rearrange the equation that we already have. So we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by the change in time. So notice that when you're doing that, you're multiplying the change in time on both sides of the equation. So we do this. So from the right side, we can cancel out the change in time from the numerator and the denominator. And all I did is I just rearranged the order to make it look nicer. So a delta t equals to v final minus v initial. Rearranging this equation further in terms of v final, a delta t plus v initial. OK, so after we re rearrange this equation, now normally the equations in physics have to be really beautiful. So we're going to make this an even more beautiful looking equation. So we're just going to flip around the equal sign and write the final velocity on the left side equals to v initial plus a delta t. This is going to be our first equation of motion that we're going to be looking at. So this is equation number one. And how did we get this equation? We took the slope of the velocity time graph, which was the acceleration. Then we rearranged it in terms of v final equals to v initial plus a delta t. Welcome equation number one. So notice I already started the numbering. So that means there's going to be more than one. Because what we said, when we're analyzing velocity time graph, we can, first of all, use the slope of the velocity time graph. Secondly, we can calculate the area under the velocity time graph. So let's try to see what that would look like. OK, so we want to calculate the area under the curve. Or technically, this is a line. But in math, we can call curves line. Line, no, we can call lines curves. 
Uh, it's complicated. It's math. All right, so my curve here is this line, and we want to find the area underneath it. It's from the time interval t initial to t final, which we had called earlier, delta t. So the whole area is this yellow shaded region. But it's not so obvious how to calculate the area of this shape, so we're going to do a trick. We're going to break it down into two regular shapes. So first, we're going to consider a rectangular piece. Let's call that A1. And a triangular piece. Let's call that A2. So let's uh, highlight them in different colors to make it much clearer. The area under the velocity time graph is going to be broken into two sections, area 1 plus area 2, where area 1 is just the rectangular piece, which is length times the width, and area 2 is the triangular piece, which is a half base times the height. Now, we're going to substitute in the values that we actually have in the graph. So the length is going to be the change in time, which is delta t, and the width, so this is the width, this was the L. The width is from the x-axis, in this case the time axis, to the initial velocity. So it's actually V initial. Base of the triangle is the same thing as the length of the rectangle, which is just the change in time. So plus a half delta T. And the height of the triangle, well, what was the final point that we got here? It was V final, and this was V initial. So what is the difference in value? It will be V final minus V initial. So the height is actually V final minus V initial. All right, so let's simplify this a bit, make it look a little bit more beautiful, right? V initial delta T plus a half delta t v final minus a half delta t v initial. So what's the whole point of this? We're trying to calculate the area under the velocity time graph, which actually measures displacement. So we can replace the area by that displacement. And we have another equation. But I think we should try to clean this up a little bit more to make it easier to look at. Because again, physics has to be beautiful, right? V initial delta t plus a half V final delta t minus a half V initial delta t. Now we're going to be collecting light terms. Notice that here we have a V initial delta T term, and here we also have a V initial delta T term. So we can group those two together. What would they give us? V initial delta T minus a half V initial delta T plus a half V final delta T. So the terms that we collected that are like terms, notice that the coefficients are just one and negative a half. So coefficient is one and negative half a half. So we can think about doing one minus a half, which is two over two minus a half, which is going to be one over two. So this simplifies to one over two V initial delta T plus a half V final delta T. And we had delta D on the left side. Now, we're still not finished because now these two terms, they have something else in common. They have the change in time common between these two terms. So we can common factor it out. So that displacement equals to 1 over 2. Oh, and they also have a 1 over 2 in common. Wow, this is pretty nice. So we can factor out 1 over 2. V initial plus V final delta T. 
Now, this equation is still not beautiful, so I'm going to rearrange it to make it a little bit nicer. So here, let's put V initial plus V final, and we're going to put over 2 inside the bracket, and the delta T outside. This is much, much, much better. So let's label our equation now. This is going to be equation number 2. So when we're analyzing our graph, let's go back to our graph, and it is a velocity time graph, there are two pieces of information we can get from it. The first, we can use the slope of the velocity time graph, which gives us the acceleration, rearrange the equation. We have our first equation of motion for finding final velocity. From the velocity time graph, you can also calculate the area under the graph, which gives you displacement. And making our equation beautiful, we get our second kinematic equation of motion. This video show you how you get the first two equations just from the slope and the area. And in the next part, I'm going to show you how we can derive the other equation. So stay tuned. Thank you.